In this video, I'll go through the pros and cons of X-Ray's Gear Drive Kit for the Atlas Pro Electric Skateboard. And then I'll answer the questions you guys asked me about it on Instagram. Let's get started. Pro, the looks. Aesthetically, X-Ray's Gear Drive Kit looks awesome. I know this is a very superficial feature, but it is a legitimate selling point. X-Ray's Gear Drive is not cheap, and visually, it does look like money. The gearboxes, skid plates, motor cages, and wheels all look very well designed. I think X-Ray has some of the best industrial designs among eSkate brands. Con, not as versatile. The gear drive kit comes only as a kit, and you can't buy the pieces separately, at least not from their website at this time. Even if you could, you can't adjust the gear ratio with different size pulleys like you can with belt drive, and the wheel options are limited to the tires that are compatible with X-Way's precision hubs. If you want to use urethane street wheels, you can't. There aren't any adapters for small wheels, and the gearboxes are too big for small wheels anyway. Pro, heavy duty. X-Way's gear drive is designed to take a beating. The chrome molly steel gears are enclosed in an alloy housing. The motors are protected in alloy cages, and replaceable skid plates come included. With belt drive, the belts and gears are vulnerable to pebbles and other debris getting inside, causing damage to the system or freezing up the drivetrain. One time I even had a surgical mask on the ground get sucked into the board's belt drive and cause the board to suddenly stop. Stuff like that wouldn't happen with X-Way's gear drive. Con. Heavy. X-Way's gear drive is heavy duty, but it's also just heavy. Four-wheel drive with belt drive was already 17.7 kilograms. Four-wheel drive in gear drive came out to 20.6 kilograms, according to my scale, about three kilograms more than belt drive. With gear drive and four-wheel drive, the board is still light enough to occasionally pick up and put into the trunk of a car, but it's not something you'll want to frequently carry up and down stairs, or even pull behind you in a subway station. Pro Torque The motors in the gear drive kit remain the same as the belt drive kit, but the gear ratio is different. On belt drive, it was 14 to 56 or 1 to 4, and on gear drive, it's 12 to 57 or 1 to 4.75. In other words, the gear drive is set up to have even more torque than the belt drive, so it's really designed to be used with the 175mm knobby tires that it comes with, on grass or mud or whatever else requires more torque. Big booties. Con Lower top speed because it's geared for higher torque, the top speed is lower. With belt drive, the top speed in the stock configuration is 60 kilometers per hour. With gear drive, the top speed drops to only 53 kilometers per hour. Okay, honestly, that's still faster than I would ride on an electric skateboard on public roads. But for those of you who care about top speed on the Atlas Pro, technically, you can go faster with belt drive, especially since you can trade torque for speed. Pro. Low maintenance. With belt drive, you can be sure that a belt is going to break at some point. You just don't know when. Some people have belts break all the time. With gear drive, there are no belts. And for maintenance, generally, you just add a bit of grease at regular intervals. X-Ray's recommendation is every 2,000 kilometers. Depending on how far and how frequently you ride, 2,000 kilometers could be a very long time. For example, if you're a casual user and you ride about 40 kilometers per week, that comes out to 2,000 kilometers after a full year. Con, time consuming maintenance. Even though gear drive should be low maintenance for most people, changing a broken belt on belt drive is actually really easy. You just take off a wheel and put on another belt. For gear drive, you add grease, and you do it for every gearbox. It's not difficult, but neither is changing a single belt. And if something does get inside the gearbox, or if you have to change out the grease for any reason, opening up the gearbox and scraping off the grease sounds like a pain in the butt, especially if you have to do it four times on four wheel drive. Now that I've gone through the pros and cons, hopefully I've given you a good idea of whether X-Ways Gear Drive is right for you. Now let's go through some of the questions people sent me on Instagram. I'll only go through the questions that weren't answered in the pros and cons. By the way, the questions were sent through my Instagram story, not by DM. Don't send me a DM, I won't see it. Is it really worth $500? Well, the price is actually even more than that. But the answer to this question is of course going to be different for everyone. My advice is if it'll be a financial burden for you, don't even consider it. Is that poop? Yes, Drew, that is poop. In fact, it's my poop. Belt drive versus gear drive range. All the electronics are the same, so if you use the same wheels and a similar gear ratio, I'm guessing the range will be similar. Supposedly, gear drive has less rolling resistance, but it didn't feel that way to me. In any case, I wouldn't have the range be the deciding factor for your purchase, because I expect any difference to be marginal, but I have not done an actual comparison. 
How well sealed is it from the elements? Does dirt get in? It seems to be pretty well sealed. We rode the board in some conditions where I would generally avoid, including mud. With belt drive, I think I definitely would have had to clean out stuff from the drive system. I am curious about how well it would keep out sand, because sand has a way of getting everywhere. Like but sand. for keeping out stuff like small rocks and mud, it did really well so far. Is it loud? I've read that gear drive is loud, but these seem to be about the same as belt drive to me. The noise is different for sure, but I didn't feel like one was noticeably louder than the other. Is it really more efficient, like generally? Maintenance, cost, torque, drag, etc. I think that depends on your use case. If you're like me and you generally ride your board on streets and bike lanes and you don't go off-roading and your belts hardly ever break, I think belt drive is the much better option. But if you frequently ride in conditions that could benefit from a sealed drive system, using the gear drive is probably better than having to clean out your belt drive system all the time. How and what to loop with? You would use gear grease, and you can squeeze it in using a syringe. I have not tried this myself, this is just what x way told me. As for exactly what type of gear grease, that I don't know. Electric skateboard gear drives have been around for years, so hopefully someone with experience can leave a comment about that. Thanks in advance. Installation process. The installation was really easy. You just undo the kinkpin nut, take off the belt drive hanger with everything attached, and unplug the motor cables. On the gear drive kit, everything is already attached to the hanger, so you just put it on and plug in the motor cables. Flex Pro compatible? This is only for the Atlas Pro at the moment. I have no idea if they'll make a smaller version for street boards. How scraped is the bottom of the gear drive enclosure? After some off-roading, it got pretty scraped up, but there is a replaceable skid plate on each gearbox. It doesn't completely protect the gearbox, as you can see here, but it does at least prevent the bottom of the gearbox from getting continually banged up. How does the braking and acceleration feel? Compared to belt drive, I didn't feel a difference. Technically, they should both be a little stronger on gear drive because of the different gear ratio, but without a big hill or a heavy rider, it's a little hard for me to tell. Is it easy to clean? Well, if you're comparing to cleaning stuff off belts and pulleys on belt drive, then yes, it's easier to clean. I still have kind of a hard time cleaning the grip tape, but that's a uh, separate thing. See, this is partly why I don't like going off-roading. <laughs> that's about it. I'm still very new to gear drive, so if you have additional info or any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And if this video was informative, please give it a like.